Okay, this next little video, I'll show you the menu system for the um, open box S10. Uh, it's quite a good, quite a neat layout in the new firmware or the firmware from September 2011. This box came from uh, Trade Me New Zealand from a uh, user YH Digital. Um, and he's got his address. He's uh, his he, his uh, web address at the bottom there, and he's um, basically uh, set up his own avatar for the um, for the menu system, which is all good. Other than that, the the receiver has uh, the typical functionality of the open box. Um, under TV channels, you can you can list your TV channels. Um, and your radio channels, you can set your favourites, you can delete all channels if you want. Uh, to toggle between menus, you push OK to get into the menu, and then you can push the exit key to exit back. This is where it gets interesting. This is, uh, this is the installation menu for the satellite receiver. Push the uh, OK button to enter the menu system. This is a quick setup area, I haven't really used it as such because I don't have my MoTeC, um, my HD2100 motor set up at the moment, but um, this is, if you did have one set up, this is where you would um, enter your local latitude and longitude, and um, also you would decide whether you were going to use um, USALS, which is an automatic uh, antenna location system, or DISEC 1.2, which is uh, set up manually. And that uh, DISEC 1.2 is the best way for um, setting up your dish motor, I find, because you can uh, more accurately uh, adjust it for uh, for signal. Um, USALS, if the dish is just on a slight lean or not not 100% uh, 90 degree vertical, it can be slightly out of the arc and uh, it's uh, a bit of a problem. So um, it's just better to, I find, to use DISEC 1.2. Or you can... Uh, you can disable uh, dish motor settings on all uh, satellites, which is really cool because uh, um, otherwise, if you have the dish motor set up and then you want to you want to use the, the the satellite receiver on one one given satellite, so you you only really have one LMB set up and you don't want to use a motor and you don't want to use a dice switch or anything, you can go straight in here and uh, I assume yeah you can go straight in here and um, yeah you can uh, disable all uh, instantly disable. Or you can use the motor on all satellites, so you can turn them on and off instantaneously. So that that's really cool. Um, satellite list. There's heaps of satellites in here for Asia and uh, the Pacific by default. Some of them are uh, some new ones. I've added a couple of my own. Uh, mostly for looking for feeds off D1 and, and D2. Um, the satellites that you want to use in the uh, in the uh, blind scan mode or in satellite scan mode, you make sure that you uh, tick those particular satellites. Or even in the um, dwarf the dish motor, if you don't um, go into the satellite list and then, uh, by the looks of it, select by ticking the satellites that you want, it won't they won't come up in uh, any of the other menus. So that's just a tip. From what I found, antenna setup. Each satellite that you want to use, you go through, select it from the list, select the uh, LMB frequency, uh, they're just transponders, um, yeah that's that's to do if, if you have the position or if you have the dish motor working, dissect mode, um, I'm using currently using a uh, four-way dissect switch so I've, I've got um, three LMBs set up on uh, D1, C1 and D2 so currently using um, port one of that switch for D1 so that's where you'd set that uh, 22 kilohertz switch motor type is set to off because I'm not using currently the motor so very very easy to set up you do that for each satellite that you you've um, selected previously out of the satellite list you go through and set your um, parameters for those satellites uh, this is where you do a scan for, we'll do a scan here for Optus uh, D1 We'll do, we'll do free to air only. We'll do only TV channels, and we'll do a quick blind scan. You can't do a manual scan in here. A lot of most receivers um, allow you to do a 
a manual scan of each transponder. You can do a preset scan, so that's every transponder you've got loaded for each satellite, for the satellite um, selected at the top there, you can you can scan the preset um, transponders you've got in there. Uh, blind scan, that's um, going to quickly blind scan over the satellite and um, pick up any, any new activity. Good for finding your feeds at the lower symbol rates. Accurate uh, scan, that's still blind scanning, but it looks like it's uh, it's a bit slower and a bit more um, meticulous about how it goes through it. So we'll just go to blind scan here, and we'll do a quick search on D1. Now you're going to notice the word fail there on um, at the end of those first two transponders, or first three transponders, four transponders. They're all got pay TV services from Sky New Zealand, and so I told it not to, not to look for or load um, pay services and free free to view or free FTA only. So that's why it's coming up with fail. It's not actually anything wrong with it. It's just the way they uh, they um, show that in the menu. And then those that have got free to wear services on have got OK written there. So I'll let it go through in real time. It's uh, it's reasonably quick. It's a lot quicker than my uh, Ultra Plus uh, 680. But, uh, that one's pretty slow. So it looks like it takes a couple of minutes to um, to go through and scan the transponders, and here it's uh, finally finished. So it's it's not us. Yeah, it's pretty pretty reasonable speed um, for uh, blind scanning. Uh, if you if you do want to um, scan just a single transponder, I, I found a way to do it. Um, Oh, LMB power. You have to have that switched on, obviously. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to get any power from your uh, to your LMBs, and uh, you're not going to be receiving anything. So, if you don't go to the bottom of the uh, installation menu first and turn LMB power on, then it's it's not going to uh, not going to work. That's important to uh, note because um, this firmware seems to have LMB power set on its own, and uh, a lot of receivers have the LMB power option um, in the menu for each um, satellite configuration. So this one has it on its own. Yeah, what I was getting back to there, I'll get back to manual scanning of a transponder. You can do it. Um, you go into transponder list and you can select your satellite uh, by going left and right, I think. Yeah, you can. So we'll go to Optus C1. And I'll go down the list until I find a transponder that I know there's something on there that I can scan. 12407 vertical, symbol rate 30,000. So once I've found that one, I can edit that transponder, I can delete that transponder, uh, or I can. I can uh, search the transponder. I'm just looking here, I just saw it's a bit hard to see. Yeah, uh, because of the way because of the way the picture the guy's using in the background, the little blue button at the bottom, uh, the word search is written by it, so you can also access that by just pushing the OK button in the remote, from what I found. And that allows you to, um, yeah, you can uh, select whether you want free to wear, free to wear only, or no, or whatever. 
TV and radio, whatever, and you can just scan and whether you want it to be a network network search, and then you can just go OK, and it will just scan that one transponder on that on that satellite. Um, so yeah, there that that is uh, easiest way to um, from what I can see to scan those. Oh, it's done a couple of other extra ones, huh? But I would say that those transponders don't have anything on them. Oh, they seem to. Just want to try something here in a minute. I noticed something interesting there. If I did a scan, a network search scan, it finds two other transponders. But they're both going to fail because they'll have services on them. I'm guessing they'll have services on them on a transponder that I can't pick up because it's uh, horizontal uh, on that satellite, so only available in Australia. But it still um, picks up the uh, the network information for that, those transponders. Interesting. So yeah, it's it's quite a it's quite an easy receiver to use once you get the hang of it. Um, oh, I find it I find it real cool. Okay, and then last but not least is go back. I've like I say, I've created my own my own list of channels here. Under um, under favorites, I've, I've created my own favorite group. Um, and uh, yeah, and so now uh, the coolest thing of all is you can plug a hard drive into the thing, and then you can just. Uh, yeah, you can just record um, what you're seeing. It's uh, kind of it's not like a not like a box tell box or a, a sky box or something where you can go through the P, um, EPG and just like find a program. Oh yeah, I'll have that one bang and, and push record and it puts it into your planner and then you watch it. It's not like that. It's um, a little bit more um, finicky if you say if you want to record a program. So we'll go into the EPG. Okay. It doesn't want to let me win. Why has it done that? Still getting to know this receiver. Oh, it's because I'm recording. Okay. There you go. Um, I'll, because I'm recording, I can't change to any other channel or anything like that, so I just want to quit the recording for now. I'm not sure what format it records it to, but it does at least record. So, for a $170 receiver, not bad. 170 Kiwi. Um, what I was going to show you is... Go back to my favourite group. Channel 9. What I was going to show you is I can go into the EPG, so I can find a program that I want to record here, so... So there you go, 9 afternoon news, I want to record that. So the only way I found to do that, uh, if I push time, what does that do? Not quite sure what the difference there is.
Okay, I'm not quite sure what the difference with time is, is but uh So I can step forward, and then I can step back. Okay. Nine afternoon news. Right, so I can highlight that. Doesn't seem to allow me to do much. Okay, so what can I can I record with that or what can I do with it? Hmm. Not like I can do much. Okay, so let's get back out of here. All right, so let's try. Okay, so time just lets you go through the guide and see what's coming up. I guess the guide. I must say the EPG in this receiver is uh, it's okay. It's usable, but uh, yeah, it's not flash. Okay, so push the green button. I can record once, I'm going to record, rather than just set it to change the channel, I'm going to record. Um, I'm going to record 9 digital at uh, 18.30 local, I don't know if I can do that. Hmm. Okay, so I go save. I can't because like there's or I already have a program to uh, record at that time. So that's not gonna work. So back out of there. Yeah, basically you can go and you can set a timer. You know, it will record, but if I go in my menu here, timer settings, I've already got it, I've already got a program set to record at that time, which is our, our network news here in New Zealand on TV1, so that's why I couldn't record at the same time, so yeah, it's a bit fiddly, but it, it works, and then you've got the hard drive, um, hard drive functionality here, USB connected hard drive shows you your hard drive info and like uh, how much storage storage you've got available and all that kind of stuff uh, then you've got like you can play a recording so let's play one I made off TV New Zealand earlier today So then you can like, uh, yeah, you can do that. So you can like record stuff onto a external hard drive. Then just play it off and then push stop, stop. Go back to the menu. Push exit to end the, in, in, exit the menus. So what you could do is you can, it, always, it also does time shifting. So you can like, you can leave it record. You can just uh, walk out of the room. Yeah, you can just pause it. You can just pause it like this, and you can just uh, yeah go and have a cup of coffee, which I'm going to do right now, and then five ten minutes later come back and yeah watch TV where you left it off. So pretty cool functionality for something that cost 170 uh, 170 dollars, eh? So not bad.